Hey everyone. So those of you from Arizona may recognize this sign. I for one remember uh, certain students would feel that they had to press the calculator and pretend it was a security keypad in order to get my door to unlock. And so that kind of inspired me to make my own security keypad using a microprocessor. So remember last time I showed you how to use an NES controller to control a microprocessor? This time we're going to use a different microprocessor but still very similar and we're going to use a keypad instead of a NES controller. So right here we have a keypad and that's going to be how we're going to enter numbers into the security system and right here this is an LCD screen and these are really common um, you can find these on microwaves, on car stereo systems and alarm clocks and all sorts of other things but right now I have a program on it that's going to take in four values and if the four values are the right ones, so it's the equal to the combination, then it's going to say access granted. And if you press the wrong combination, it's going to say access denied. So let me go ahead and I'm just going to enter in a random set of numbers. So um, this won't be the correct combination. So you can see what happens when you don't press the right buttons. So I'll just pick. Okay, it says access denied. Okay. It's going to ask me for the first value again, so this time I'm going to actually press the right combination. And the right combination is 4474. So 4 for the first value, 4 for the second, 7 for the third, and then 4 for the fourth. Okay, and it says access granted. So it's pretty simple. And again, I'll just press 4 random other characters to show you that it won't work. Access denied. We'll try one more time. Again, access denied. And the one thing you'll notice is that when you press an entry, see how it shows up as a star rather than the actual number that you pressed? Um, the reason why I did that was so that, you know, someone who's looking over your shoulder can't see what the password is. Um, and that's pretty common for these kinds of things. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the code real quick. It's probably a little intimidating at first, but I'm going to show you a couple things that we can do to reprogram it that's uh, pretty simple. Um, so for example, the combination, that's an important one. So the combination is right here. Okay, these four numbers in a row, four, four, seven, four. So if we wanted to change the combination of the lock, all we have to do is change those four values. So let's, let's change it to something um, over 9,000, such as maybe nine, zero, zero, and then we'll make this one. So it's 9001. Okay? So now let's re-download the new code. And if you take a look, see how this microprocessor has two wires? Um, one of those wires is for downloading the code, and the other one's for powering the microprocessor. Alright, so let's go ahead. We're gonna download it, and we're gonna hit the little play button. Okay. So now it's running. Okay, it's going to ask for the first value. So now I'm going to press the combination of the old um, program to show you that it doesn't work anymore. Remember it was 4, 4, 7, 4, okay? And it says access tonight because we just changed the password. So let's go ahead and let's do 9, 0, 0, 1, access granted. Okay, so that's one thing we can do to change the code. Let's try something else. Um, so this table right here, these are all the string values that are displayed on the LCD. So if you wanted to change uh, anything, so for example, let's change, instead of saying press first value, let's just have it say something else like, Um, let's try this. We'll see if it works. If it doesn't, I'll have to explain why. So we're going to say, hi, St. Michael's. And then on the second line, we'll do, go Riptide for my students in Florida. Okay, so I'm going to download the code. So first of all, we got to stop this code. And then we're going to re-download it. 
So on the screen now, it says, Hi St. Michael's, and it says, Go Riptide on the bottom. So that's a really easy way to change what it says on the screen. And the reason why I was a little bit hesitant about the Hi St. Michael's is that there's obviously a limit to how many characters you can display because it runs out of room. Um, and the trick is there's actually only 16 that can go across. So I wasn't sure if I was going to be, the message was going to be too long. Um, actually, so if you look at it, there was an exclamation point at the end of Hi St. Michael's. If you go back to look at the code, you can see it. So that exclamation point actually is lost. Um, so that would be the 17th character. So you got to be a little bit careful that you don't have messages that are too long. Um, but other than that, that's what I wanted to show you for today. Um, stay tuned. The next video I'm going to show you actually how to make music using the microprocessor. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.